The Nessler's test is an important and highly sensitive qualitative chemical test used to detect the presence of ammonia and ammonium salts in a sample. A positive Nessler's test is the formation of a colored precipitate ranging from a pale yellow to a dark brown color. Nessler's reagent, named after the German chemist Julius Nessler, is a pale yellowish colored alkaline solution of an inorganic compound consisting of potassium cations and the tetraiodomercurate 2 anion. It is chemically known as potassium tetraiodomercurate 2 with the formula K2HGI4. It is prepared by combining potassium iodide and mercury chloride which is then made slightly alkaline by adding potassium or sodium hydroxide. There are a handful of ways by which one can prepare Nessler's reagent. Some literature sources mention the use of mercuric iodide while others use mercury chloride. Also, certain formulations use potassium hydroxide while others use sodium hydroxide. In this video, we'll be preparing 100 ml of Nessler's reagent using mercury chloride and sodium hydroxide combination. To watch my video on how to perform the Nessler's test, do click on the link given in the screen right now or the link given in the description below. To prepare the reagent, you'll need the following. Mercury chloride, potassium iodide, sodium hydroxide, distilled water, weighing scale, three beakers of 100 ml capacities, stirring rod, spatulas, a 100 ml volumetric flask or graduated cylinder. A suitable container with tight fitting caps for storage of the prepared reagent. To begin the protocol, weigh 5 to 7 grams of potassium iodide in the first beaker. I've taken 7 grams here. Dissolve the iodide in about 10 ml of distilled water. Keep this beaker aside. Now weigh about 2 grams of mercury chloride using the second beaker. Add to this about 40 to 50 ml of water and continuously stir the contents until the mercuric salt is completely dissolved. This might take some time. Also keep this beaker aside. Now weigh 4 grams of sodium hydroxide in the third beaker. Dissolve it in about 20 to 30 ml of distilled water. Allow it to cool to room temperature. Alternatively, you can directly use 20 ml of 5 molar or 5 normal sodium hydroxide solution. It's the same either ways. Also keep this beaker aside. Now take the beakers containing the dissolved mercury chloride and the potassium iodide solutions. Slowly and carefully add the iodide solution to the mercury chloride solution with intermittent stirring. Upon the addition of the iodide to the mercury salt solution, you can see a beautiful display of pinkish-orange precipitates of mercuric iodide as the two solutions start reacting. As more of the iodide is added, the precipitate slowly becomes thinner and scantier. Once all of the iodide solution has been added, the precipitate dissolves completely, leaving behind a pale yellow clear solution of the tetraiodomercurate complex. Now finally add the sodium hydroxide solution to this yellow solution and stir to thoroughly mix the contents. Transfer this solution into a 100 ml graduated cylinder or volumetric flask. Rinse the stirring rod and the three beakers used to contain the three solutions at the start of our preparation using minimal quantities of distilled water and pour the rinsings into the cylinder or flask. This ensures complete transfer of all traces of the reagent components into the cylinder. Now make up the final volume to 100 ml using distilled water. This is Nessler's reagent, ready to be used for qualitative tests for ammonia and ammonium salts. Transfer the prepared reagent into the appropriate labeled container for final storage. 
cap it tight and store it in a cool place away from direct light, on storage of the reagent precipitates may develop. This will however not affect the performance of the reagent. Do check out my other biochemical test videos and reagent preparation videos as well by clicking on the various links given in the description below. Thanks for watching.